Good morning and uh, welcome along to a Kiwi Grand Tour special. Here we are in the Trust Arena in uh, Henderson, Auckland. Took five hours to get here and it's all about motorcycles today. Swap meet over here with um, all sorts of gems and uh, obviously uh, yeah, bits and pieces. Nothing that I actually recognise, but oh, there's a Harley Davidson tank. I tell a lie with two fillers on it. There's a white DL650. Look at that, just sitting there, ready, ready to, ready to roll. I like the crash bars on it. Looks good. And of course, guys with patches on their backs. I mean, look, look at that. I mean, that's that's uh, a well patched guy. You might be able to see that I'm actually wearing my my, my Kiwi Grand Tours shirt today just to be official. Um, great news about New Zealand is one of these big events and as you can see folks there's not many people actually here. Um, I'm quite surprised how I've just been able to get straight in and into it and there are there's the bastards that we're playing later on. Morning, how are you? Thank you. And although it says no gang patches I wonder how I'm going to get on with my Kiwi Grand Tour shirt. Um, I'm sure I'll be fine. How are you? Morning, how are you? Good. Oh great, thank you very much. A 77 Ducati 900 uh, double S. Um, beautiful piece of beautiful piece of machinery. I gotta be honest, I gotta be totally honest, I've not heard of Moto Marini 1976 Moto Marini 3.5 Sport. Um, beautiful restoration on that, just absolutely fantastic. Okay, so we're just having a quick walk through at the moment, folks, just so we can uh, basically get our bearings. Got some classic bikes over here again, all the classic bikes, which I'm really enjoying. There's an R5, look at that, rotary, a rotary Suzuki. Amazing concept, isn't it? I mean, look at the tail light on that, fantastic. I don't know what's going on here, but you've got quite a um, quite a shrouded area there as well. It's bizarre. The famous GT 380. Oh, look at that! It's a Honda. It's a Honda 354. as a bike is excellent value for money for what you get with the Benelli and uh, they just they just the finish line does look stunning interesting very dished seat on the back there the pillion will be sitting quite a lot higher than the rider they seem to have taken the best bits of a lot of bikes and put them on onto this big screen there's, there's the side bits on the windscreen as well instrument dash cluster. I like the idea they've got the bar on the front for your GPS and so forth that can go on there as well. They've got the little extras like the little rubbers down here for the um, foot pigs that come out. I think they're about $10,000 in New Zealand, brand spanking, and they're a reasonably priced bike. Um, obviously trying to break into the sports market as well. <laughs> Look at that radical back end on that. I mean, uh, almost very rare stolen from Envy Augusta in one way but um, interesting little sissy bar on the back I mean that obviously comes with uh, a pillion uh, passenger that needs to be rather small to be on the back of that because if I stretch my hand over that you can see the size of that rear seat is actually quite quite small uh, 
But if you're anything like me, uh, a selfish motorcyclist, you don't really consider pillions as part of your um, purchase decisions. Just over here we've got, what, what I'm finding here is there are random, there are just random stands of bikes that, that don't make any sense why they're together. Um, for example, um, old, old school types of Indians and roughs and so forth right next to a Yamaha 350 um, from, the, from the 70s. Uh, but beautiful condition. Um, restoration work's been pretty good except for that part there is interesting because that was the same part on the CB360 we never got quite to do. It's as if it was purposely left as original. I've always liked the colour scheme of these. The, the Honda CB1100Fs are um, uh, the Super Boulder, I've always sort of liked that, I don't know it's the American colours or what you call it, but I just, uh, I'm not too keen on the gold mags though, I've got to say. Uh, 1927 Indian Scout, uh, bikes from the public that have decided to come in, all from different clubs. They're all looking really nice and shiny, nice and clean, and memories as well, like the XLF um, 500S. I mean, uh, uh, if you had one of those, uh, you were pretty cool. Uh, I, <laughs> they, have a, they have a thing called an offer box in here, in other words, uh, we're not putting out a price out there today, we're just having a stab and seeing what happens. Now this is an interesting um, combination of a Harley Davidson. If you look at the tank there, there's a whole lot of um, demonic skulls on it, which uh, looks absolutely fantastic and, uh, and everything's done, and the mudguard's done in that as well. This is actually a really nice custom job. I like the idea that they've got the registration just stuck in the back there. The, the bullet indicators are fantastic. This bent license plate um, is probably very good for speed cameras so you can't read the whole plate. Massive handlebars on it, forward controls. Um, that's quite a, actually, for a Harley Davidson, I actually quite like that. And I'm not, I've got to put my hand up, I'm not a massive fan of Harley Davidson. Yes, I've ridden them, but that particular one took my fancy. Moon money for the Kawasaki's these days. A, a nice restoration. They did the pipes just so well back in the 70s. Those sweeping pipes, I absolutely love them. I think they really do make the motorbike. Now in New Zealand here, Graham Cosby Restorations is known to be the number one guy in New Zealand that restores Kawasaki's. He's got a high presence on the internet. He's got a great following. The quality of his workmanships, I guess, reflects in the price. Uh, these bikes are not cheap at all to purchase and are actually quite very rare to find. Does a lot of, uh, of course, personal projects. You, you'll find that a guy will have a really mint KZ900 and yet Graham the guys will make it as new. You know, that, 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 that next level of restoration. Every little inch of this thing is, is beautifully restored. The tank is just beautiful the shocks, the frames all been done and I'll guarantee that motor has had so much work done to it. Uh, look at this, this is a classic example of the next project, a CB750 K2. Uh, still got the old old registration plates in New Zealand with the uh, registration numbers. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful example of those Kawasaki's. Well done, Graham. Now there's a classic bike you don't see often, that's the 100, the Honda 100. And um, Restoration work, it's, it's, it's patina, it's uh, definitely patina, but um, interesting just to, to have a closer look at this one, seeing as we have spent some considerable time doing up the 125, and uh, just seeing the similarities and the differences between the 100 and the 125. Of course, where would a motorcycle show be without that HD branding, Harley-Davidson, uh, again, uh, beautiful uh, restorations or sorry customs I should say uh, beautiful customs and I'm looking right down on the finest detail of that and whoever's whoever's polished it and cleaned it up has done an amazing job the chrome is just absolutely beautiful it, it's just polished to the max um, you know it's a kind of bike you'd almost not want to take out on the road and get a little bit of mud on it it's 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 absolutely stunning in the uh, lots of crime 
and uh, I love the way that they've, they've changed the uh, font and the styling on the Harley Davidson on the side again. On and on and on. Harley Davidson's. And just look at the pipes on this thing. This is like Batman's Harley Davidson. It really is. It's got some amazing color to it. Um, it looks mean. It just looks like it's there to do the part there. And it's got those extra long pipes in it that, that uh, make it look uh, obnoxious as hell. Yet, uh, what a <laughs> what a bike. You know, it's interesting they go so hard out on the exhaust pipes, yet they still put in the subtle little indicators on the back there, which, which is, which is uh, which is really cool but uh, the Black Beast is what it is and um, another great bike here at the show just look at those spokes absolutely incredible <laughs> I love the venomous spikes at the side here another treasured bike and look at the detail on the um, the motor there it just looks stunning what a great job someone's done on this one here and again, those long, long pipes go right out the back. Um, I like the colour scheme. In fact, I, I, I like a lot of this going on, the white wall tyres. It, it's almost got a look from the 1950s car industry in this bike. It just reminds me of big Cadillacs and Buicks, and yet yeah, it's in a motorcycle form. And, and even right down to um, the, the chrome handlebars, it just looks fantastic, that one. Uh, I, I do like that one, and that's um, that's a really nice bike. Now, did someone say choppers? Because have we got choppers to look at here? I mean. Uh, If there are kids watching at home, I do apologize while I scan across to this tank, but it's got some sort of dragon and some partially naked woman fighting the dragon slayer. But again, um, look at the handlebar. I mean, how do you ride this thing? Seriously. I love the flamed mudguard on it. This is a total custom job, this thing and uh, they've gone to a lot of effort to make it look at this sugar baby pot chopper for sale 25 grand you can buy this for and if you like purple we've got one for you as well and in, in, in the purple um, what i what i'm encouraged about is they're um, accommodating for the um, um, height challenged people of the world uh, that seat is about where my kneecap is at the moment so it's easy enough to hop on and hop off just what, what's happening at the show is I'm walking around and I think I've seen it all and suddenly I come across something else that's even more stunning or more different or more elaborate or more out there. Now we've got the green and tan model. Again, um, those big massive pipes that are coming right out the back there. Uh, they look brilliant. This has got some really nice detailed paintwork on it. The, the seating, the stitching on the seat is good. I like the little little tassel at the end. It's got that easy rider look to it, yet it, 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 it's got that gnarly custom look to it as well. Uh, look at those headlights on it. They just look stunning, don't they? So that's, uh, that's the Harley Davidson in the green. So here's a bike that's really made for me with um, uh, my, my vision that I have impaired slightly. This thing here has got the ultimate in rear vision monitoring. Uh, of course, based on the mods on the Rockers era, the 1960s, of course, in England, um, Brighton Beach and so forth. Yeah, I love the way they just used a long arm on it and just simply added more and more and more mirrors to it. Great little bike. In fact, this is an interesting little section here. Um, these are like tiny, tiny little bikes. They start off, this is a thing I haven't actually seen before, Yamaha Land Scout. But it's really, really small. It, it, it's, it's. Um, I mean, you can sort of start to see by these are kids around these bikes, and they look like they can just about hop on them. So the, so the, the physical size of these are, are tiny, tiny little bikes. But this got me the Vespa Super from the 70s, all done up, and yet left original as well. Great, great little bike. 
just been talking to the guys about the system, camera system is $699 New Zealand dollars, front rear and camera, 1080p, you can take up to 256 gig memory card, we can do a loop system, or you can just push the button on the handlebar there and you get instant record as well. The stealth mode on these things, the camera is literally just sitting in there, I don't know if you can see it with the light, higher than IP56 rating so you can do mud, water and it won't, won't record there. And what I like about it is even, even the front little wee camera is stuck on by 3M pads there. I like the way you've got the rear camera as well. You've got an instant record button so you can come on and off. One question I didn't ask is whether recorded audio or not. We'll find that out and get back to you. As you can see the people here, it's really good because it's not absolutely jam-packed so you can't walk anywhere. You've still got uh, quite a few people here, lots of talk. Interesting with the, uh, uh, the generation of people here, mostly older, slightly older guys that like, like us as well. Well guys who have been on bikes, you can tell these guys have been on bikes for some years and they've got that, um, that uh, weathered look, you know, to say that, hey, I know a bit about bikes, like this guy. <laughs> this, this is a hit. This kind of guy, you know, he, he knows his shit. He's got the camo pants on. He knows what he's doing. So this is a company called Chris Classics. And there's some beautiful old Suzuki's here, including a 72 TS250. Some of these don't look like they've been on the road for some time, right? They haven't got the registration plate on and so forth. But there's a real, real classic example of probably a late 60s, early 70s, is it? 71, 71 uh, Suzuki um, 350, just came out before the new styling that came out of course in about 73 I think it was. Uh, this, is where, this is where the technology starts changing, of course from front brake to disc brake, and about 73, 74 they started changing out to disc brakes. Here's a gold wing, I don't, I don't quite, I don't, so it seems to be a bit out of, out of place with these other bikes here at the moment. Oh, mind you, it's, it's a 76, but even for 76, you, you can see the style, the, the um, instrument panel, uh, it's, quite a, it's quite a classic look, uh, similar to the CB360, but how about that Tron looking um, uh, light board there? I, I don't know whether that's actually original or not, I presume it was. Looking at the rest of the bike, the rest of the bike does look quite, quite original. Talking of Hondas, we've got this, um, the 504, again, amazing exhaust pipes, they actually stick, stick the, the, the twin on there and of course it's on the other side as well. Similar styling to a CB360 but the fuel cap is on the right hand side and not in the centre. It's still got the, the front support for the mudguard on that particular model and it still has a it has, has quite a quite a unique exhaust system I've got to say. I'm just seeing what, yeah it's a 73 so it's the same vintage as a CB360. It's in the brown. It's probably not my favourite colour guys but looking at that, um, yeah. It's a nice example of one. There's probably bikes here at this show that I don't realise how classic that they are or how special that they are or how limited that they are because um, if I take this for an example, an XS650, I haven't really sort of stumbled across many of these and whether it's because it's such a rare classic. I wonder what this is, sort of, Jason might be able to tell me what this dial is here. It looks like the top of my, my blender from home. That was the styling back then, of course, was the, the, the bulbous type of uh, hand grips. Again, you can sort of see the similarities between this and the one that we've got at home. Funny enough, same wiring loom, I've just caught a bit of the wiring under here. It's even the same colours, so, so there you go. Now this is an ultra smooth bike. It's a 78 CBX 1000. Uh, massive motor. Look, look at the width of that motor being the six cylinder. Again, a classic, massive big exhaust, but what I don't like about these exhausts is the tiny little hole in the back there. It's just the way that they were. And um, it's nice to see it with the back carrier on it. CBX were, were a bike that came out and they, 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 didn't, they didn't seem to sort of stick around for too long in this particular design before they sort of got up, upgraded. It was like, in 78, it was like using parts from a 74, 75 bike and trying to make it into the new bike. It wasn't until a few years later that they um, completely revamped that bike. 
Watch this one here, Dunedin 1971. This is a very good example. This this one here is probably, I would suggest, one of the tidiest restorations I've seen. It's still got the original plate on the back, which is nice to see. Um, look at that curved type of carry that's got on it. Again, a miles per hour speedo telling me maybe there was some reference to either an English bike or maybe actually thinking of it back in probably that era in New Zealand they were still in miles per hour before they went to kilometers I think they changed the kilometers in the early 70s in New Zealand here um, just having a look around this this bike's probably a really rare bike and someone out there will probably know that it's rare that's a 125 look at the size of that exhaust pipe on that one really small really really uh, really narrow another great example of it and then of course you've got these things that I find these Hondas absolutely ugly I, I'm not a big fan of them but from the 1960s this is showing true heritage of what the era was like I mean look at that beautifully restitched red seat the the shocks here are, are rectangular in shape and then of course uh, my, one of my first bikes had one of these um, uh, gear shifts where you could tap the tap the rear the rear step to uh, change the gear. When you see that and you look at the 125 that we just recently done up, there's a hell of a lot of difference in them. The, the quality and um, of the guards on this are heavy duty guards. It looks quite a heavy bike for a 125, but it, um, I like the chrome accents on the side of the tank and the knee pads there as well. Uh, a beautiful example, a no nonsense dash. That's all you're gonna get is um, small speedo on that. Um, ignition. On the side here brilliant and uh, not a round headlight not quite round but that's that's a CB 125 a classic vintage the only thing that's letting this bike down is these front indicators are faded that's the only thing that's wrong with that bike what a what a beauty so this bike's come up in third place on the 2022 uh, forever bike bike forever show best Japanese bike it is the rotary the RE5 it's a great restoration uh, they've obviously spent some money on this puppy to get it looking like that and of course being a water bus you've got a temperature gauge as well it shows you that's what's going on there but again uh, uh, they're getting more and more rare even the little wee side reflectors on the indicators is a cool little look there the dual back end um, head tail lights different to the Honda of course that's more rectangle yeah the RE5 I love the license plate number two well done you and there's a 1929 Sun motorbike. Look at the horsepower on this thing, two horsepower. Amazing. They're basically, they got a bicycle and they stuck a little bloody lawnmower motor on it. Uh, unusual controls on it. I would not be able to ride that bike. I would have to be instructed how to use that because you've got, you've got things probably like advanced retired. You've got, you've got gear knobs on the side here. You've got a beautiful brass headlight. I love the headlight. Here's your advanced retard probably over here. The horn, complimentary, Huga horn. But that's an old bike, man. That's, uh, that's the sun. Just wanted to point out the three pedals on the bottom of this bike here. It's bloody classic, isn't it? And this funny look got third best scooter. And uh, great protection for the legs there. This is beautifully presented, complete with the British flag rear uh, spare tire and the little picnic hamper just on the side there just away for your your trips away in the in the in the summers and here's a brand I'm quite partial to being Triumph of course it's the Triumph Riders there's a Triumph Riders Club here in, in uh, Auckland what I like about Triumph is they definitely make a variety of styles of bikes that suit most people you know sports bikes right the way through to to massive beasts like the Thunderbird Storm 1700 cc I mean you know that's that's more powerful than a, a Volkswagen Tig, Tiguan a basic model a prize-winning bike like that a 1950 Norton and it does deserve that prize because it is that it is that tidy this bike it's a it's a really good example um, really wide seat hey must be made for cowboys or something look at that size of that seat on that thing Okay, we're just having a look outside now and just seeing what's been going on because it's been about an hour or so back in there. As you can see, some uh, uh, some boys have arrived on their big Harley Davidsons. Sometimes you know at these events that they make a bit of a bit of a scene coming in. Excuse the Suzuki in the middle of them all. Here's a V-Strom owner 
nice straight back. Looks like he's in control. What I like about bike shows, it's not so much looking at the new bikes, looking at custom bikes and looking at, at um, uh, very rare bikes. It's also nice to see bikes out here that you know you see them riding around day to day but they quite often go so fast that you don't really get to see them in the flesh and see what they're actually really like. Some of these bikes are so cool they actually should be in the show. You know there, there's some bikes out here that are also really stunning. This guy's pretty keen with his Triumph. That's the big 1200 Explorer. He's got extra lights on it he's got back look at that it's just kitted up for that and that is a touring bike so as the day finishes here uh, we've got lots of bikes actually leaving um, and then funny enough we have some guys just arriving as well this is harry here from uh, somewhere i couldn't quite read his jacket but as you can see we've got a lot of heavy duty bikes coming in um, including the ktm touring guys with gopros on right the way through to guys with big loud Harley Davidsons but this is what it's about it's the Ride Forever motorcycle show here in New Zealand um, I would say it's been actually quite a successful event and uh, one that um, uh, should continue year after year as well As it now comes to, comes to an end, where we're going to be uh, finishing up here for today. A big shout out to all our subscribers, obviously, and thanks for watching. And uh, hope you enjoyed a little insight of what happens in a New Zealand motorcycle show. Uh, a country of 5 million people in the middle of the South Pacific, basically an island stuck slightly below Australia and slightly to the right. We can, we can mix it with the big guys, I think. These, these bikes, some of these bikes are pretty rare. And, and quite incredible to see all in one place. Thank you for watching and have a great afternoon and enjoy your motorcycling.